Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For everybody out there enjoying Malware Reverse Engineering, Didier today started a nice series of diaries looking into reverse engineering HTA files. HTA, these are HTML applications. It's essentially sort of HTML, JavaScript, and such bundled together, uh, very often used then by ransomware and such. I've seen it, for example, where you receive a zip file. Once you unzip it, you get that .hta file that then when you double click it, does additional malicious things basically triggered by JavaScript. So today's diary is mostly about how do we deobfuscate this JavaScript part to basically figure out what's next. The next part is then, well, um, some other scripting language like this car case PowerShell or other tools to download and run additional malicious uh, code. Pretty neat diary to get you started with. And of course, uh, Diddy has all the tools for you in order to make reverse analysis pretty easy. And Apple today updated, well, pretty much everything. It released a new version of its operating system. Now, not a major version, but one of those interim versions that typically provide some additional features, but also, of course, and that's of interest to us here, some significant uh, patches against vulnerabilities. I counted a total of 66 uh, vulnerabilities being addressed here across the different products. Quite a breadth of products here, for example, Mac OS, all the way back to a uh, Big Sur, so 11.7.5 is what we are here at. Also, the Saturday vulnerability that was patched back in February for newer versions of iOS is now being patched back to iOS 15, which now is at 15.7.4. Couple interesting vulnerabilities here, CVE 2023-27935. This one affects all versions of Mac OS and it does allow for arbitrary code execution using DCE RPC. And there are actually uh, two other very similar uh, vulnerabilities that are uh, being patched uh, with this update. And sort of a curiosity here, we do have a vulnerability being addressed with a studio display firmware update. This also affects Mac OS Ventura, so the latest version of Mac OS, and it is while well, an app may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. So essentially a privilege escalation of vulnerability. As usual, very little detail here from Apple as to the details of these vulnerabilities. Apple I am and uh, hopefully everything works out okay for you. And of course, as usual for Apple, many of these vulnerabilities apply across a number of their different operating systems. They also released a standalone update for Safari that you may need to apply to some of the older operating systems. So for the older operating systems, you can still use the original sort of major version of Safari. But if you want to have all the patches, you probably want to apply the newer version of Safari. For macOS Ventura, the Safari update is included with the operating system update. And then there are also a number of uh, Vim vulnerabilities that are only patched for Ventura. Not sure if the version of Wim that comes with the older version of macOS is also vulnerable here and just not uh, being uh, patched. This is where we're talking about uh, Apple and macOS. Uh, Uptix also has a report about some newish uh, malware they found for macOS. It's an info stealer. It extracts uh, cookies, session information, and also your keychain appears to just be installed by the user willingly. 
And given that it's not digitally signed, uh, the user has to jump through some hoops here to actually get it installed. So probably need some good rules in order to convince the user to do it. But once you install it, it will basically just prompt you for your keychain password and then use that to exfiltrate the keychain and also as mentioned, the other related data. Exfiltration here happens via Telegram. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.